Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. Happy Easter and welcome to worship at St. Paul's Lutheran Church. May your entire season of Easter, the next 50 days, be blessed by the promise of resurrection and new life. Now, let us join in worship.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from death of sin by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 28th chapter. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So, They left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Have you watched The Chosen yet? The first multi-season TV show about the life of Jesus. About 110 million people have watched it so far, The Chosen. About 10 St. Paul's people asked if I had seen it, and by then I got tired of saying no, and so I checked out an episode. I can see the attraction. First off, Jesus is super buff. He's Hollywood handsome. At least he doesn't have blue eyes and blonde hair like back in the day. But, but his presentation is still a reminder that the show is completely fiction. You've got to remember, it's no replacement for the actual gospel. But what it does is it engages us with an imagined story of Jesus' life. It helps us imagine one of a thousand possibilities of how things actually were. A review in The Economist said, The Chosen focuses on Jesus' ordinariness. He cooks, brushes his teeth, cracks jokes. He's asked at a wedding if he can help a disciple improve his dance moves. And Jesus quips, some things even I cannot do. It paints a picture, it offers an image, for often images stick with us far longer than words. Images have power, and an image of stone has been haunting me for two months. I've shared that I'm finishing a degree in English literature, I sit in a classroom with a gaggle of 22-year-old college students every Tuesday night. They find out I'm a pastor early on in the classroom, and immediately it changes the vibe of the classroom. (laughs) It's like inviting Mr. Rogers to your bachelor party. (laughs) Really changes things. But recently in class, I had a peak experience when one of the students heard that I was a preacher and I weave this literature in when I preach, she looked at me in wonder and she said, you talk about this stuff in your sermons? 
I'm not religious, but that's sick. <laughs> and that's when I knew I had arrived. I, the Reverend Thomas Russert, preach sermons that are sick. The English poet William Wordsworth wrote a pretty sick story back in the year 1800. The story is called Michael. It's about a real-life family that lived near him, and he begins with an image that has haunted me. Beside the brook appears a straggling heap of unhewn stones. It's a sad story of a shepherd named Michael, an old man, stout of heart and strong of limb. His wife was a woman of stirring life, just as hardworking. The pair had an only child, one of inestimable worth. His name was Luke. The boy, more than all other gifts that earth can offer to declining man, brings hope with it and forward-looking thoughts. Luke was 18 when to his father's ears came distressing news. His father, Michael, had co-signed a loan for his nephew, who by unforeseen misfortunes went bankrupt. And now Michael owed half his estate, his ancestral lands for which he had worked his entire life. Husband, wife, and son, after days of deliberation, decide that Luke, young Luke, will go work with a relative in the city to help repay the debt. And then he'll return home to his ancestral lands. Michael's parting words to his son. Heaven forgive me, Luke, if I judge ill for thee, but it seems good that thou shouldst go. Michael had planned to build a sheepfold with his son Luke, a pen, and for that purpose he had gathered up a heap of stone that the two of them would one day lay out together. Luke went to the city. For months, they received glowing reports of how things were going. But then, as Wordsworth wrote, Luke began to slacken in his duty. And at length, he gave himself to evil courses. Shame fell on him so that he was driven at last to seek a hiding place beyond the seas. Their boy, Luke, was never seen again. Within seven years, Michael and his wife were dead, their land sold to a stranger, the cottage removed, and all that remained was the heap of unhewn stone. What are your dashed dreams? your heap of unhewn stone. I felt the weight of a heap of stones as I left the airport in September 2021. I dropped off my brother and father after their short visit. I felt so sad that my brother was leaving and I didn't care at all that my father had. I didn't even care that he had come. And it crushed me to realize it. My brother and I spoke about it a few days later, how throughout the visit it seemed the only thing on his mind was the next drink. What great bottle of wine, the taste of the gin in the martini. I'm sharing this with my father's blessing. He preached about him, it himself this past year, along with his subsequent recovery. I hadn't had a grown man cry for quite some time, but the floodgates opened. I hated him for choosing alcohol over his family. At least that's how I saw it. 
dashed dreams of having a dad for a few more decades, a healthy grandpa for my kids. It was my heap of unhewn stone. Promises should not be made because they cannot be kept. That is where Friday left Jesus' disciples. All those hopefuls thought finally they had the Messiah, the chosen, whom they'd been waiting for. And instead, Jesus walked into a trap, traded all of his power for a shameful death on the cross and the darkness of a tomb. Another broken promise. Three days later, it was the women. Mary Magdalene goes back to see, back to that tomb. Perhaps she had not forgotten Jesus' promise that he would rise. Perhaps she went back to see what God can do with a heap of stone. And immediately the earth shook, an angel appeared and rolled it away, because that's what God does with heaps of stone. God rolls them away. The women got their Messiah back. Jesus' first words when he sees them are so cheering. He says, greetings. In Greek, it's from the word that means joy, rejoice, greetings. It's the sound of new life. It's the refrain of the resurrection. Greetings. The turning point of human history when Jesus overcame death and rose again, promise fulfilled. The women felt fear and joy. They still had their doubts. We have them today as well. We say at St. Paul's, we're grounded in tradition, guided by intellect, growing in faith. We don't pretend to know everything about God and resurrection and Jesus to know with certainty, but we seek to trust without reservation that God said in the life of Jesus that love is stronger than death. A century ago, a Belgian priest and physicist first theorized that the universe was expanding and therefore it had a beginning. And I believe God was in the beginning and is with us to the end. Not just to help us religiously believe or intellectually wrestle with whether or not Jesus could really resurrect, but to care more about whether or not we can really change or resurrect. Thomas Keating wrote, God has not promised to take away our trials, but to help us change our attitudes toward them. Whether or not we can really change or resurrect. By some godly grace, it happened for my father. Within a week of dropping him off at the airport, I was on a Zoom call with my three siblings and my mom to come up with a plan to talk to my dad. A week after that, we had an intervention with all the fear and the nerves and the hope with my dad and my mom and my brother on the couch and my two other siblings on Zoom. We each spoke the truth in love and through our tears honestly told of the pain of losing him and our longing to have him back. And by some grace, he surrendered. For surrender is the path to resurrection. Surrendering to the love and support of community. Surrendering to the promise that our worth is a divine gift and not a human achievement. My father said it was like he was just waiting for us to say something. I got my dad back. The wise, fun, and caring dad that I remembered most years of my life. 
Still a bit grumpy at times. That runs in the family. But I feel so thankful. I believe the Spirit of Christ was with my family to do what we did. Not everybody gets their dad back. People who deserve to just as much as I don't get their dad back. Or their mom. Or their spouse. Or their child. Not everybody gets them back. At least not yet. I believe Jesus came back so that we could see that promises are fulfilled. Whether here on earth or in heaven, Jesus promises that what waits for us is greetings, joyous new life, in which there is no heap of unhewn stones, but roads paved with gold, leading us to a banquet filled with all the hungry, oppressed, addicted, incarcerated, all the broken, beloved people we've loved and lost, and I believe they are made whole. They are eating and feasting, and then some angelic voice gives the pitch and all begin to sing a song of praise, some even dance, and it's awkward, and it's beautiful, and everyone is smiling, for the promise has been fulfilled. Love is stronger than death. That's the end of the story. And there they are. Can you see them? Michael and Luke, father and son, there in the midst of this celebration, finally building that sheepfold from the heap of unhewn stone.
Let us pray. O oh God, we've seen the life of Christ go down the drain, the good words, the gentle spirit, the rebuke to those deserving it, the challenge to the way things are, the overturning of the legalistic bind. They came one night and took him away, and by Friday he was dead. We said no to the way he lived, and that's the way it's always been. But you said yes, Lord, and made it stick. And for that Easter victory, we give you thanks. O oh God, there were those who at first did not recognize the risen Christ, but in some simple way, like the breaking of bread, found him to be alive. Many of us find it hard to believe. We know the power of death. We pray your help so that on this Easter day, as we partake of the bread and the cup, Christ may come alive to us, shaking us and shaping us into a springtime people with Easter in our eyes. In his saving name we pray, amen. Hear us now as we pray for those in need and name them before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us on this Easter day as we remember those whom we've loved and lost. They are now part of the company of heaven who cheer us on as we continue our earthly pilgrimage. We miss them. Hear us as we remember them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these words, however broken, we offer you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.